which for cosmologists like me, was the most wonderful reward. I waited a long time to witness images like this. One of Hubble's greatest images comes from an unprecedented idea to point the telescope at what looks like an empty patch of the sky for 10 consecutive days over the Christmas vacation 1995 to try and capture light from any extremely dim objects that might lurk there. Astonishingly, almost all the objects in the final image are newly discovered galaxies, thousands of them, each containing perhaps a hundred billion stars, and all within a tiny piece of sky we previously thought contained nothing. It's a groundbreaking triumph for both. But this is just the beginning. Hubble was designed to be continually upgraded to see ever. It may seem crazy to doubt that our concept of reality is true. But I think to find the meaning of life, we must answer the question Is there an independent reality or not? Okay. It's not the sexiest conversation. Are we in? Are we in? Um, <laughs> The, 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 I mean, I think here's, in my mind, like the, the, the strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Um, that that 40, call it 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, vir virtual reality, we'll have augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Just in indistinguishable. Um, e even if that rate of advancement drops by a thousand from what it is right now, um, then you just say, okay, well, well let's imagine it's 10,000 years in the future, uh, which is nothing in the evolutionary scale. Um, so, um, so, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and there would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Now, Brian Greene, uh, he's best known to the public for popularizing string theory. And uh, his, his earliest book, The Elegant Universe, was a mega bestseller back in 1999. And uh, it was followed up with a book called The Fabric of the Cosmos, Space, Time, and the Texture of Reality. Now, that's, that touches on so much, and it, it enables him to think about so many interesting branches of physics that intrigue us. And in 2003, there was a paper published by a philosopher from the University of Oxford on whether or not the universe is a simulation. And I had to ask Brian Green if he thought this could actually be possible, <laughs> just to get a, get a, a, a professional opinion on this. <laughs> Let's find out. If it's the case that one day we can have computers that can recreate a reality in bits and bytes that has such verisimilitude that they're inhabitants of those simulations that feel that it's real, if that's possible, and I think many of us agree that it might be. Sure. We're, getting, we're getting close already. Just let's assume that's possible. It's so much easier to create a simulation than it is to create a real universe. I mean, how are you gonna create a real right. universe? Right. So if you wait long enough, there are gonna be many, many more simulated universes than there are real ones. So any sentient being, if they're rational, will think that the odds are that they're in one of those simulations because there's so many more of those compared to Just real ones. Statistically, statistically, you're in the simulated one, not the real one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how do you know? And it would be very hard. I mean, some have suggested, sort of like in the Matrix, look for glitches. Mm. Like, real universes don't have glitches, but computers can have them. But I say to well, that... Well, glitches because, uh, presumably, a fallible entity programmed that... It could be that. It could be that. It could also be there's a electric current glitch that happens in the real universe and screws up what's happening inside the computer. But I don't buy that argument because if it's a really good simulation, it should be able to rewind, erase the memory of a glitch, 
fix it, and then the simulated beings have no memory of it ever happening.